Welcome to Holy Spirit Parish North Ride in the Archdiocese of Sydney for the celebration of the Eucharist on this third Sunday of Advent. Welcome to you here present and to you viewing online here in Australia and other parts of the world. The third Sunday of Advent is traditionally known as Godete Sunday. Godete means rejoice. The rose-coloured candle on our Advent wreath and the rose-coloured vestments convey a mood of joy and celebration. During our Mass, we will also pray for the success of our Archdiocesan mission plan, Go Make Disciples, which is being launched this weekend. This plan supports the renewal of our parishes and other Eucharistic communities here in Sydney. Our presider is our parish priest and provincial of the Congregation of St. Michael the Archangel, Father Stan Klook. Let us begin Holy Mass with the opening hymn. Joyce in the Lord always, and again I say rejoice. Rejoice in the Lord always, and again I say rejoice. Rejoice, rejoice, and again I say rejoice, 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 and again I say rejoice, rejoice in the Lord always, and again I say rejoice. of the Father, and of the Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Welcome everyone again to the celebration of Holy Eucharist. And yes, rejoice, because Jesus will be coming into our hearts in a few moments in Holy Communion. Dear friends, our readings today remind us that people have always yearned for justice, healing, peace, and liberty. Like our ancestors in faith, we await God's promised one, and we are called to actively prepare his way. And we now ask the Lord to renew us by his love. I confess, I confess to Almighty, Almighty God, God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have, I have greatly, greatly sinned in, in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done, done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my, my most, most grievous fault. Therefore, Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all, all the angels, angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen.
let us pray. O God, who see how your people faithfully away the feast of the Lord's Nativity, enable us, we pray, to attain the joys of so great salvation and to celebrate them always with solemn worship and glad rejoicing. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. joy of the Lord, the prophet Isaiah calls on the people to help build a new kingdom of justice and peace for all. A reading from the prophet Isaiah. The Spirit of the Lord has been given to me, for the Lord has anointed me. He has sent me to bring good news to the poor, to bind up hearts that are broken to proclaim liberty to captives, freedom to those in prisons, to proclaim a year of favour from the Lord. I exult for joy in the Lord. My soul rejoices in my God, for he has clothed me in the garments of salvation. He has wrapped me in the cloak of integrity, like a bridegroom wearing his wreath like a bride adorned in her jewels. For as the earth makes fresh things grow, as a garden makes seeds spring up, so will the Lord make both integrity and praise spring up in the sight of the nations. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. says in my God my soul community to pray, rejoice, and give thanks in all circumstances. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Thessalonians. 
Be happy at all times. Pray constantly. And for all things, give thanks to God. Because this is what God expects you to do in Christ Jesus. Never try to suppress the spirit or treat the gift of prophecy with contempt. Think before you do anything. Hold on to what is good and avoid every form of evil. May the God of peace make you perfect and holy. And may you all be kept safe and blameless, spirit, soul and body, for the coming of our Saviour, Lord Jesus Christ. God has called you and he will not fail you. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. A man came sent by God. His name was John. He came as a witness, as a witness to speak for the light, so that everyone might believe through him. He was not the light, only a witness to speak for the light. This is how John appeared as a witness. When the Jews sent priests and Levites from Jerusalem to ask him, Who are you? He not only declared, but he declared quite openly, I am not the Christ. Well then, they asked, Are you Elijah? I am not, he said. Are you the prophet? He answered, No. So they said to him, Who are you? We must take back an answer to those who send us. What have you to say about yourself? So John said, I am as Isaiah prophesied, a voice that cries in the wilderness, Make a straight way for the Lord. Now this man had been sent by the Pharisees, and they put this further question to him. Why are you baptizing if you are not the Christ, and not Elijah, and not the prophet? John replied, I baptize with water. But there stands among you, unknown to you, the one who is coming after me and I am not fit to undo his sandal strap. This happened at Bethany, on the vast sides of the Jordan, where John was baptizing. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Dear friends, today is traditionally called, as Nadia mentioned at the beginning of the Mass, Gaudete Sunday. Gaudete is Latin for rejoice. It, it is a reminder that as Christians we are to be joyful people. 
And the joyfulness seen in Catholics and in their relationships with others should be a witness to the world of the love of God and the transforming power of his grace to those who embrace him. And this great joy should inspire others to seek the source of such peace. Yet, in our current culture, for many, this joy seems to be lost. Why? I think for some, it is due to the lack of establishing and maintaining a close relationship with Christ. For others, it is due to their inability to see Jesus' face in those around them. But dear friends, what if we are told that Jesus whom we have heard so much about and whom we are waiting for is already here in our midst as one of us, one who is sitting in this church, in this congregation. Maybe that's Brian, maybe Jenny, maybe Camilo. What possible difference would that make in our own lives? I recall a story that can help us understand this question a little better. A certain monastery discovered that it was going through a big crisis. Some of the monks had left. There were no new candidates joining, new vocations. And people were no longer coming for prayer and a spiritual direction as they used to. The few monks that remained were becoming old, bitter and depressed. Even the relationships between them were becoming stressed and unkind. The abbot had heard about the holy man, a hermit, living alone in the woods and decided to consult with him regarding the situation problem. The abbot told the hermit how the monastery had dwindled and diminished and now looked like a skeleton of what it used to be. Only seven old monks remained. The hermit told the abbot that he had a secret to tell him and he informed the abbot that one of the monks now living in his monastery was actually the Messiah. But he was living in such a way that no one could recognize him. With this revelation, the abbot went back to his monastery, summoned the community meeting and recounted what the holy man had told him. So the aging monks looked at each other with disbelief, trying to discern who among them could be the Christ. Could it be Brother George, who prays all the time, but has a holier-than-thou attitude? Could it be Brother Anthony, who is always willing to help, but who is eating and drinking too much and can fast? Could it be Brother Stan, but he has a short fuses? The abbot reminded them that the Messiah had adopted some bad habits as a way of camouflaging his real identity. But this only made them more confused and they could not make any headway figuring out who was the Christ amongst them. 
At the end of the meeting, what each of the monks knew for sure was that any of them, excluding himself, could be the Christ. And something happened. From that day, everything has changed in that place. Monastery became a different place. The monks began to treat one another with greater respect, dignity, and humility, knowing that the person they were speaking to could be the very Christ. They began to show more love for one another. The community life became more brotherly and the prayers more fervent. Slowly people began to take notice of the new spirit in the monastery and began coming back for retreats and spiritual direction, spiritual guidance, advice. Word began to spread and before long candidates began to show up and the monastery began to grow again in numbers as the monks grew in zeal and holiness. The monastery became alive again. And all this because of a man of God, holy man, who drew their attention to the fact, to the truth, that Christ was living in the midst as one of them. Actually, that Jesus was present in all of them. Dear friends, I know that's only the story, but we must remember that as Catholic Christians baptized and confirmed, we have the Spirit of Jesus Christ within us, in our hearts, and through the Holy Eucharist, we have the true body and blood of Jesus physically united with our bodies every time we approach him in Holy Communion. The source of all love and joy resides with each and every one of us. So now tell me, how can we not be joyful knowing this? Why such a long faces so often when we come to the church? Why we carry for ages grudges in our hearts? Why even sometimes when we walk out from the church after mass, we argue at the parking lot or with the parish priest outside of the church? And we just receive God, who is love, who is joy. Why this anger? How can we not be joyful knowing this? <laughs> because to rejoice, it also takes real faith. Don't take me wrong. I understand many of us are experiencing tough times have lost jobs, are enduring hardships, personal losses, and what appears as huge obstacles because of global pandemic. Some people are still terrified. Yet, this is where faith comes into play. Haven't we all heard the scripture that God will not give us more than we can handle? Never. So hearing this, just how do we approach life when so much around us seems troubled? We are to have faith. Faith that everything in life, good and bad, is always in God's hands and has a purpose. And that purpose will be used to help us grow in virtue and holiness. 
But do you believe that God is in control of your life? Do you? If so, what do we really have to fear? Nothing and no one. Not COVID-19. Absolutely. So, dear friends, let us look for and see the holiness in each other. Let us honor and respect each other, knowing that Christ lives within all of us. And through our example, let us be that voice, crying out in the desert, and show the world the real joy that radiates through us. Especially when we walk out from the church after Mass. And finally, that our faith shows the truth that no matter what trial, obstacle, or discomfort comes upon us, we deeply believe that Jesus is present and that he will come again, offering us real and eternal joy, love, peace. And this is the source of our joy. And of our and our focus here today on Gaudete Sunday. So, dear friends, don't worry. Be happy, because God really loves you very much. And now, with real joy in our hearts, let's profess our faith. I believe, I believe in, in one God, God the Father, Father Almighty, Almighty, maker of heaven and, and earth, earth, of all things visible and invisible. invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son, Son of God, God born, born of the, the Father before all ages, ages. God from, from God, God, light from, from light, light, true God, God from true God. God. Begotten, begotten, not made, made consubstantial, consubstantial with the Father, Father. through him all things were made. made. For, for us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended, he ascended into, into heaven, heaven and is seated, seated at, at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken to the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Dear friends, we pray that this season may remind us to be joyful, grateful and responsible people. For the ability to model for the world a church that demonstrates love and joy and is an example of profound responsibility. We pray to the Lord. For all who are afraid or discouraged, confused or disillusioned, or who do not know where to turn or how to act, and for our commitment to encourage and guide them, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. <clears throat> for the humility and courage to acknowledge our need for repentance as individuals, as church, as a nation, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the launch of Go Make Disciples, that the Catholic Church in Sydney may renew its commitment to placing an encounter with Jesus Christ at the heart of our lives our structures and our ways of doing things so that genuine renewal will be possible. 
We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who are celebrating a significant birthday, especially our long-time and oldest parishioner, Maria Teresa Papandrea, who turns 101 this weekend. For a birthday filled with joy and all the Lord's blessings, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those among us who are most in need, for the sick and dying, and for those who have died, especially those mentioned in our parish bulletin. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Gracious, <coughs> gracious God, we are reminded that you have long acted on behalf of your people, bringing hope, relief and rejoicing. Open our ears and our hearts to hear and respond to all that you ask of us. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Even so, come Lord Jesus, come. Even so, take your bride away. Even so, come Lord Jesus, come. Pray, dear friends, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. May the sacrifice of our worship, Lord, we pray, be offered to you unceasingly to complete what was begun in sacred mystery and powerfully accomplish for us your serving work through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation. Always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For all the oracles of the prophets foretold him, the Virgin Mother longed for him, with love beyond all telling. John the Baptist sang of his coming and proclaimed his presence when he came. It is by his gift that already we rejoice and the mystery of his nativity so that he may find us watchful in prayer and exultant in his praise. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions and with all the hosts and paths of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. Bye. 
You are indeed holy, O Lord, the found of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Anthony, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin, Mary, Mother of God, with Saint Joseph, her most chaste spouse, Saint Michael, the Archangel, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may marry to be coerced to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. 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 As one God's family, united in Jesus Christ by his love. Let's pray with so much joy in our hearts as he taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, 
from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let's offer each other the sign of love, the sign of peace. Peace be with you. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Sins of the world grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but I say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Dear friends, let's invite Jesus to come into our hearts in a spiritual way. My, My Jesus, Jesus, I believe, believe that, that you are present in the most blessed sacrament. sacrament. I, I love you above all things, things and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen.
Friends, before we receive our final blessing, uh, I would like un to, ad to address uh, to our oldest parishioner, uh, Maria Teresa Papandrea. I know that at the moment Teresa is watching us right now. Hello, Teresa, how are you? I hope you are having a wonderful time with your family. So, just let you know we, we pray for you and we wish you many blessings, many graces from our loving Father. And today we have a Gaudete Sunday. Rejoice. Uh, I want to tell you something funny about Teresa Papandrea. She's like our mother um, in the church. She's always worries about uh, us priests, you know. She says, oh, Father Anthony um, had a new haircut. Or oh, Father Stan looks tired when he's saying Mass. She's a very good, you know, sight. And uh, the other day she was saying, oh, Father Stan, there's something wrong with him. There's something growing on his chin, cheek, uh, yeah, chin. Or oh, cheek, yes. And, and Teresa, everything is okay. That's just the microphone. So many, many graces and many blessings uh, to you. How we say uh, in Italian, 
Happy birthday. Buon compleanno, Teresa. Yeah, that's what it is. <laughs> and now let's receive God's blessing. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you all, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Thanks be to God. Saint Michael, the Archangel, defend us in battle. We are safeguard against the weakness of the devil. May God rebuke me, humbly pray. And do you, O Prince of the Heavenly House, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. are days of great trial, of famine and darkness and soul. So we are the voice of the desert, crying, prepare the way of the Lord. Behold, He comes, riding on the clouds, shining like the sun, at the trumpet's call, it's your voice. Zion's in salvation comes, behold he comes, riding on the clouds, shining like the sun, at the trumpet's call, make your voice, if you hear it to believe, out of Zion's in salvation of the harvest the fields are as white in your world and we are the laborers in your vineyard declaring the word of the Lord 